Today we are looking at a painting by the artist Richard Tweedy, who studied under William Mary Chase at the Art Students League in New York City. And he's well known for his academic figure drawing. This is a self-portrait, and the folks at the League place it between 1895 and 1900. I'm also seeing some bloom. Bloom occurs because moisture was present at some point but it's not always as scary as it looks. Bloom tends to live on the surface. It, it may not have penetrated and attached itself to the canvas fibers. Very often after a simple cleaning, the varnish can be resaturated and the painting will look fine. This is a loose canvas, obviously not on any stretcher bars. We will be putting it on stretcher bars ultimately. For right now, Let's go into the man's collar, into the white area. Yes, it is very, very dirty. Sometimes it feels as though you could just go and go and go with a particular solvent, but this one is very penetrating. So you want to stop shy of making the surface as clean as you would like it, because the solvent's action continues after you've lifted the cotton swab. Yeah, this makes sense. A white shirt that's white. Shocking. Let's go up into his forehead. Hey, you still with us? Cool. If you like this, tap or click like. If you really like it, hit subscribe. Thanks. Now back to work. Of course, you want to test where the paint is thick. You want to get this area, well, I mean, you wouldn't just jump into, say, the thin shadows around his eye because, well, the paint is thin. So let's get to know this painting. Okay, this looks more like a skin tone, doesn't it? Let's check these pink cheeks. It almost looks as though he has a ruddy complexion right now. Is it really true? Or is that the dirt? You might say, but I like it like that. I like it that he's ruddy looking, but what if Mr. Tweedy wasn't really? Well, let's get to the truth of the matter. It's very orange, isn't it? He looks healthy. There is something white here which I looked at under magnification, and it's an accretion. It's something that's attached to the surface. We'll remove that later using a tool as well as a solvent. Now let's check on the ear now. I'm going to go into the black. Now that we have a good sense of how dirty the surface is, we can accept this brownish black that we're picking up. Knowing what the dirt looks like gives us an idea of what we can expect over here. It's tempting to just check one area and say, okay, I know what the dirt looks like, but you must test every pigment. No surprises. I like to think about the history of the painting, what happened in its life. Perhaps it sat in storage for quite a bit. Uh, I lived somewhere a hundred years ago without air conditioning, so perhaps it was open to the coal dust in the air that was being used for fuel. Look at his eyebrows, aren't they sweet? Lovely detail. Now, let's get down to the brown of the coat. Some solvents require rapid removal from the surface, but some solvents require time to do their thing, and they benefit from being agitated, moved around. And that's what I'm doing here. Some solvents are very thin, and they seep in, but they may travel to another area. The nice thing about a gel-based cleaning material is that it doesn't travel. It stays right where you put it for better control. So the difference may not be as breathtaking as it was in his white shirt, but 
We have to clean the whole garment, don't we? He's cleaning up quite well, Mr. Tweedy is. Mm -hmm.